how should journalists report terrorism? But before that question, there's another question. The first question we, is, what kind of journalism do you want to practice? And this is a key question. The manual on the treatment of terrorism by journalists is based on a key conviction that journalists are, are working in the public interest. They provide information, precise and confirmed information to the public, as well as a plurality of views, which allows the public to become a citizen. There's also a concept in the manual which uh, is based on the idea that the journalists are parts of checks and balances in a democracy, that they are a watchdog on power. It means that uh, uh, it's a clear uh, statement about the autonomy of journalism uh, and the understanding that journalism plays a key role in society, but also especially in the context of terrorism. Because as we remember, Margaret Thatcher, former prime minister, in the UK had said that uh, publicity, and she meant the media, is the oxygen of journalism. Whereas <coughs> Catherine Graham, who is the, he was the uh, chair of the Washington Post company in the 70s, had responded, yes, publicity might be the oxygen of journalism, but uh, the news is the lifeline, lifeblood of, of, of freedom. And uh, this is on that basis that uh, this manual uh, is, is, has, been, has been designed. Which means that, uh, <coughs> What are the functions of journalism when especially a terrorist attack happens? The first one is to try to be the reference for a public which is uh, under, under threat, who feels that it's, uh, it's fear, that there might be bad consequences for uh, themselves or for other parts of the community. So the media should become the key reference, the anchor to some extent, the anchor uh, which uh, provides first a precise, quick, confirmed, responsible information on what's happening and allows therefore uh, the society to, to react in a way which is not uh, feeding the, 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 uh, the objectives of terrorism because terrorists, what, do, what they want is to instill fear, they want to create tensions in the society, they want to stigmatize, and therefore they try to get the media into their, into their game, and this is the key challenge. I mean, the media should precisely be the ones who are, because they're informing uh, with precision, with calm, uh, they're the ones that are able to counter uh, this objective of terrorism. Therefore, the first thing for journalists is to make sure that uh, when they cover an attack in particular, uh, their first concern should be for the interest of the public, especially the people that are uh, victims of the, of the attack. They should um, certainly uh, not become an obstacle for uh, security services and, and, uh, and people that are uh, the first responders to, to, to the crisis. And therefore, I mean, they have another mission, which is basically to, to make sure that uh, the information is going to, to be sent um, quite often live or, or online uh, will be uh, a key element in uh, fighting the objective of the, of the terrorists, but also a key element in helping society to, to, uh, to respond and, and, uh, and, and uh, be able to sustain the, the shock of, of the attack. Journalism uh, <coughs> have uh, as a major uh, priority to report the news in a way which is uh, calm, uh, which is uh, fighting the major temptations in the case of uh, breaking news, which is uh, relaying rumors, sending information because people want to be first, whereas they should be right. Uh, which would be the, the, the they should be uh, the ones that are able to uh, filter every bit of information which is not confirmed, every rumor, every uh, claim that's not based on fact. This is the first uh, mission of journalism when they when they cover terrorism, and they should be doing that uh, by respecting a number of standards. So one of the major concern they should have is to respect first the dignity of the victims, which means that they cover an attack, they have to make sure that they understand 
uh, that the people that are the victims uh, need uh, respect and uh, it should apply to everything which is being said and published about them. And there's a key concern, of course, is the use of uh, photographs. How do you use photographs? How do you use video during an attack? Uh, how do you make sure that those videos uh, not only will not impair uh, the safety of the secret services and the, of the safety operations and, and rescue operations, but also that are people that, are, that have been hurt already by the attack will not be hurt a second time by the way you cover, you cover them and you cover uh, their fate. The, the major objective, um, of course, of the terrorists, as I said, is try to stigmatize, to instill fear, to, uh, to uh, create tensions in society. And the, uh, the coverage of the attacks should go beyond the mere uh, reporting on what's happening on the ground. It should also uh, make sure that it's being put into a context which allows uh, the journalist to be contributing to an understanding of, of, the, of the attack, to give meaning to the news. And it's, it's fundamental that journalists uh, will not be impressed by people saying you should not uh, try to explain a terrorist act because it means you're, you're trying to justify it. It's no way uh, that should be accepted. I mean, the, the, the fact that journalists are um, trying to explain the reasons why there has been an attack uh, is a key function of journalism to provide understanding. And through that understanding, it's, 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 uh, it's a major contribution to uh, helping the, the, the population to be resilient and to, to confront the impact of, of an attack. That means that our journalists have to be uh, very careful in not being seen as relaying uh, the propaganda of, journalists, of, of, of terrorists, meaning that they have to be very careful of uh, not playing their game by relaying uh, their video without I mean, taking the necessary precautions to make sure they're not, not uh, being used as or uh, as or mouthpieces, as or uh, propagandists for, for, for the terrorists. It's a key, uh, it's a key uh, uh, decision in the newsrooms to make sure that everything which is being uh, disseminated, especially photographs and video, we don't help the terrorists to, to, to reach their, their objectives. It means also that journalists should uh, affirm their autonomy and their independence from uh, all the other actors in the crisis. O of course, if they are not expected to, to uh, hamper the work of the police or of the rescue service, at the same time they shouldn't be seen as just being the, the, the sort of media representatives of the authority. They should k remain independent and make sure that they understand the need for our independent coverage of the events, meaning keeping their autonomy towards uh, the authorities, making sure they continue being seen as actors uh, that are watchdogs of the authorities. Very often, uh, in the first hours that are uh, following an attack, I mean, the journalists try to remain on team. They, they practice some form of fusion journalism because this is not the moment when it's possible to raise tough questions, for instance, on why this attack was possible, were there mistakes uh, made by some authorities, for instance, or, uh, were there uh, deficiencies in, in the rescue system, for instance. This is the moment in the first hours, but after a couple of days, those questions should be asked. This is certainly part of the contribution of journalism to uh, confronting terrorism is helping society to clarify the zones of shadow that, that, that exist uh, in, in, in the way some authorities uh, address the issues and carry their own responsibilities. So it means that the journalists have to have a right of inventory after, after, the, after the fact. And uh, <coughs> this is because there's something which has to be clearly understood uh, and quite often is under threat when terrorism at, uh, attacks is that quite often journalists are asked to 
basically behave as if they were under orders uh, by authorities. And of course, if they have to keep their sense of responsibility, they should keep that sense of responsibility, understanding that they have to make sure that they understand that their behavior uh, will have con consequences. At the same time, they should clearly uh, be uh, brandishing the, the flag of freedom, freedom of the press in particular, uh, because uh, freedom of the press is not and should not be seen as an obstacle to fighting terrorism. It should be seen as a, a major, a major a set in addressing the question of terrorism. And so these are the principles um, of reporting terrorism. Of course, there are a number of, of our details and, 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 and key uh, practical issues that are being addressed in the manual uh, and was discussed during a uh, training session is a number of issues that uh, deal with uh, questions of our naming, for instance, uh, terrorists. Should we give them a name? Should, should we provide uh, photographs of them? So which kind of photographs should we publish of them? Uh, what kind of our videos should we publish that are being distributed by terrorist organizations? What are the rules that should apply to make sure that uh, uh, all the highest standards of journalists are being protected? And uh, it also uh, relates to a number of other issues like uh, uh, addressing the questions of our, uh, the, uh, the kind of our stigmatization it quite often happens when there's a terrorist attack, so quite often it's focused on a specific community, and uh, very often uh, the temptation is to generalize and, and to, to uh, create the feeling that uh, the terrorist uh, expressed views of a specific community. And the issue for journalists is precisely to make sure that uh, all the voices in the society are being heard. That means that uh, they should uh, certainly uh, uh, have contacts in all communities long-term context in security so they do understand who is who uh, and what are the real feelings in those communities. This is, the, this is one key uh, element that reflecting on the coverage of terrorism certainly raises is that uh, you cannot uh, focus just on an event and cover it as breaking news. Discovering along the way that basically you don't have necessarily among your team the experts uh, of a number of issues uh, they do discover uh, during, during uh, the moment of an attack that a, a newsroom should make sure that it's being prepared uh, to confront those challenges. That means um, preparing uh, the, the newsroom not only in techniques of reporting and, and deciding who is to be uh, uh, leading, for instance, in the case of breaking news, the team of reporters and, and experts are going to, f to, to, to write a comment on the issue, report and comment on the issue. It also means uh, really developing an understanding of all the issues that are linked directly or indirectly to terrorism, meaning developing uh, knowledge. Uh, and knowledge-based journalism is certainly something which uh, would help journalists to cover terrorism in a way which would be more relevant, more precise, uh, and, and would help journalists to escape from uh, the temptations of going uh, too quickly um, live without necessarily having all the elements that will help the people to understand what's happening. So preparation, but also uh, after the fact, I mean, when the terrorist action has happened, it's essential that uh, the newsrooms make a sort of debriefing uh, and, uh, and uh, reflect on the way they covered, well or not, uh, the event. It's part of the inventory moment, the follow-up moment of journalism. It means, of course, uh, certainly uh, getting back to a number of issues which were not possible to be raised during the, the attack, like, for instance, the deficiencies or not of the rescue services or the preparation of the secret services. Uh, but also it means uh, reflecting on the journalism 
of in the newsroom, why was it that uh, a number of uh, mistakes were committed? Why was it that uh, when, for instance, on a TV station that went live, there were a number of uh, ethical issues which were raised and, and, and major, major, major mistakes were, were committed? Uh, how to uh, make sure that the next time, because terrorism will certainly will be with us for a number of years, uh, how can, can, can one make sure that uh, the, the team is better prepared, not only to report, in a way which will precisely help the media to be a real anchor, a real reference, but also uh, that the media will be a, a major part in the fundamental uh, interpretation of what terrorism means, where, where it, what are the causes, what are its implications for society, and it is something which means that uh, journalists should not only think about the coverage of terrorism in terms of uh, techniques or norms and practices, but also it really means an essential reflection on the fundamental uh, values of journalism and, it, and, it, and its importance in society.